What's up, guys? Tim Halstead here for episode 41 of, I don't know if it's tearing, tearing it down, building it up, but one way or another, this 409 Cleveland's going back together, and that's where we're at now. I just want to give a good shout-out, quick shout-out to Darren Morgan. Thanks for coming through, Darren. I appreciate the help you've been giving me. You really kept me on schedule. I appreciate that. Now the coronavirus is slowing everything down. We all know how that's going. You know, best advice is to stay quarantined in your garage and um, get your projects done. But the hospital's been pretty crazy in the ER. I won't get into that. I got too much other stuff to be catching up with here. So I also want to give a shout out to my family, Andrea, Izzy, and Elena. Thank you for my birthday presents that I got. My birthday was today, and I appreciate that. I got a nice picture that Andrea made. Um, like oil painting from our wedding. It's pretty cool. I like it. Thank you, hon. Uh, love you. Also got this nice lanyard from Izzy, which has a homemade soft squishy on it. It's nice. I like that. And a little bracelet that she made for me. And my other daughter, Elena, got me a nice, um, some notepads and a little uh, stuffed animal bunny. I'm going to bring him out here. He can sit up here and keep an eye on us. But now, back to the point. So shout out. Thanks, guys. So I'm setting up the heads I got. I just got them back from Oregon and I got titanium exhaust valves now. So I got both titanium intake and exhaust valves. To, to run titanium, at least these, these are the old Ford Motorsport valves. Uh, the exhaust I got from Dana Sniff, the intakes I've had, I have another set of those. But you need to run lash caps and they're about 60 thousandths. So when I measured this up and mocked it up, the valve is now longer than it was before when it was stainless, when it was steel. The converse is true. The same with the steel here. This also has a lash cap. And with Yellow Terra, these rocker arms being a almost like a shaft type system to change the position of the rocker arm tip in relation to the valve, you need to raise or lower the pedestal. Like on a regular Cleveland that has like a, a rocker arm fulcrum type setup, that you change the relation with pist uh, push rod length. When you change that length of the push rod, you're changing where you're putting that tip in relation to the valve stem. You know, you, the ideal is to be perfectly 90 degrees and perpendicular to that. You know, and there's a lot of other things I'm reading about now about mid-lift theory, which I may try and measure on this after I get the heads on. But right now, I'm just kind of mocking it up, seeing what I need. The previous builder had put titanium intakes in his heads, and he had made a shim which raises the pedestal up. Not much of a, a big deal. Tr hard to find these shims. I, I've been looking for something like this. I'm going to say it's 80 thousandths. That's how much longer that exhaust valve is than it was when it was stainless. So I need to shim this pedestal. And that's what the Yellow Terra have. And they have this roll pin that sets inside a hole that's already been pre-drilled in my head when we initially set these up. And then you put this shim underneath here and it changes that fulcrum height, which is changing that valve tip in relation. So that 450 mid-lift stuff is happening right in the perfect area of the valve stem at mid-lift. And you get that by measuring the, taking half of the cam lift, dividing that by two, and I think times it by the ratio. I'm still trying to learn that because that, that's a pretty cool thing. So you might be leaving some stuff on the table in regards to valve lift, duration, and speed. And that's what you're changing is that valve speed with that rocker arm ratio. So the intake side was golden. It's the exhaust I had to get shims for. And I tried ordering shims, and the correct shim I could get was an 085, which would be great. And it's a Yellow Terra shim, 6279. Well, I get them here, and it says 085, but really it's 40 thousandths because they're missing the B at the end of it. You know, I've been talking to Yellow Terra. They want to sponsor me with a set of rocker arms. They want to offer me a set of 1.8, which I'm still trying to figure out if I could use those. And how it's going to change things and I've been talking to Morgan about that how it changes the valve speed and that makes a big difference especially after what do you say 75 76 degrees after top dead center that's where you get the maximum speed so I'm kind of learning this theory and putting it all together but that shim was too thin and I didn't want to double it up and mess around with them I had some 120 thousands but I tried sanding them down couldn't do it straight I said I'm not messing with it so I, I got on catalog before all the issues with the virus scene and ordered a bunch of washers from Fastenal. And actually, I went and picked them up yesterday, and they don't even, they're not even open. Like, I paid for them before, and they kick them underneath the garage door, and you pick them up and roll. But I copied the shim here, 
the steel one for the intake onto this. And this is a center bronze. It's pretty hard, I guess. I don't know. It's good bearing material. At least to mock it up and, hey, I'll probably run them. But they look like this. For the head stud to come up through on the exhaust, it's cut out like that for it to fit. So I had to trim this washer for it to fit. And then the roll pin goes through here, just like that one that was made for the other side. And then I kind of copied them on here, and I'll show you how I make these. It takes me about a minute to make one. Then, when I put it back on here, which I'm going to show you, you can see, we'll mark it off, and you can see how it moves and puts the relationship of the roller tip in the center of the valve. You know, now, could I say that's good to go and send it? Sure. But if I got time, I might as well see how this 450 lift, th or the mid-lift theory works and see if I can figure that out. Now, with that being said, let me interject this. Now, we're talking about getting the rocker arm set up in relationship to the valve being 90 degrees from the tip to the center of the valve. You know, and then what the rocker arm does is convert radial motion into linear motion. So that's, that's where the issue is. When I'm talking about setting up that relationship, and I said that the, the push rod doesn't really make a difference as much on a shaft type setup, it does and it doesn't. You, you first, from what I'm reading and learning, you want to set it up to get relationship with it being an association to the pedestal. Then, and when I read Yellow Terra's instructions from way back when, then it tells you after that you can make sure the adjuster's set up however it is all the way down, you know, turn and a half up, I think. Then you can check your length and get your push rod. I'm pretty sure, looking at this, the push rods that I had were 8,450 for the intake, and the exhaust is 8,400. So with the ex exhaust being longer now, I bet you I could just buy that push rod 8,450 and be golden. So just to make sure that we clarify that push rod length does change that tip also. So it's not something to overlook. You kind of do them in combination. So here's the deal. Let's make one of these shims. I'm taking one here that I had already made, my prototype, so to speak, and I mark it on on a piece of, on the washer. And then I'll just take it and put it on this board. Makes it easy for me to be able to drill it that way. Then I don't have to hold it. Then I center punch it here and Same hammer I've had for probably 40 years. It's a regular hammer, Blake. Just watch out when you're drilling. And in this case, I don't think I need to have any lube on this. It's low speed. It's not going to get that hot. Take your time, that's all. Nice. Take your dikes. Pretty good. Take it to the grinder. Be right back. Check it out.
And then this case, I go to put it back together. And I like to use the cap screw. It kind of centers it. Makes it a little easier. hear that that's in there and the thing that keeps a why you don't need rocker arm stud girdles or guide plates is because a fulcrum here is cut out and fits the body of the roller rocker and keeps it from doing this and that cap screw locks into place so this is just preliminary I got the lash cap on there I got a little blue This is in no way scientific, but it kind of gives me an idea where I'm at. Now that I know that shim from checking it with this side, let's check it out. You know, if it went full lift, let's say 750, and it comes up. We'll see what kind of pattern we got. Now that mid-lift theory, what they're saying is to do it with the heads on there, Valve springs on there, heads torqued down. I don't know about fully torqued, but torqued down enough and check it that way. If I got time, I think I will because they're saying you're leaving some on the table because what little thousandths that you're missing here is down to like the millionth of a degree in a can. So you can leave some on the table, but I'll tell you, looking at it right now, check it out, see for yourself. For me doing this, I think it looks pretty good. See what you can see right there. You can see it's pretty good. That center is that oiling hole. Daddy. So you saw for yourself that's a that's a mint contact patch or sweep. It's it's narrow. Although they don't say things are you know the cam's what's going to make it different as far as you know narrow or wide or how it's set up. In relation, if it's way off, it's going to be probably wide looking. You want it tight, man. You want to make sure that you're doing the best you can to keep it centered at all times to that degree of motion that's being translated from the cam. So I'd already checked the intakes. They're ready to go. So it's just a matter of me finish making these shims up and I'll get the head set up. I got my new micrometer from... Benchmark Bob in Arizona. I'm telling you, he's got great prices on a lot of building type stuff. Daniel Wilson talked to me, sent me a message, said he was going to buy some stuff through him. Um, pretty reasonable guy. And not much more to do in regards to the heads. You got that. You see what I got to do with that. And about the block, I just have to torque the mains down and set the thrust. Uh, I'm pulling all the rod caps to look at all the bearings, clean it all up and retorque those just to make sure that everything's good and then I'll probably recheck my heads in regards to piston valve clearance see where I'm at exactly make sure my cams in I think it was at 105.5 card wanted in at 106 but you know I think it'd be good with that it's been like that I haven't changed anything in regards to that cam timing I want to keep it as much as the way it's been because this will really tell me where uh, Morgan's port work is coming through Want to give a shout out too to Todd Quinn from Platinum Engine Design, Engine Service. I've known Todd a long time. I've dynoed at least three motors with him. I think this is uh, this is the third motor. I've dynoed a few motors with Todd. Great guy. If you watch that video that's on my channel, his son made that Connor, and we're going to make another one. It's going to be even better than that. So it's pretty cool to watch that. I don't know if we're going to be doing have time to do intakes. Because I got the one that Morgan did for me, the Ford Motorsport with the AR plate. And I also have the Scott Cook Air Supremacy with a Dominator. You know, it's not that hard to change on a dyno with a Cleveland because there's no water involved. It'd be a quick switch to see what that thing could do. But just it just depends on time. I think things are going to be delayed with the coronavirus. Stay safe, everybody. Stay inside. You don't need any extra trips going all over. It's not worth 
But yeah, that's where I'm at. It, it, I talked to him. In about two weeks, we're going to plan on doing an engine dyno. So today's like the 18th. I appreciate everybody subscribing and sharing. I also want to give a shout out to Smith Brothers Push Rods. I've talked to Eric and Jeff is into the marketing. They want to sponsor me. At least we're talking about it. So in this case here, like I was saying about the push rods, I know I'm going to need longer push rods. We talked about that before. So I'm going to have them hook me up with the right push rods, 120 thousandths wall, and the right style. I don't, I don't know enough about push rods to give you any more other than the tip and how thick they are. But we'll see what they say. You know, I don't know what they have to offer. But it would be good to bring them on board along with... You know, I got, got Awareness Motorsports. I got to hook up with those guys. Dr. Ron Burgess, we're going to kind of do a, a video series somehow. Morgan and I want to do something back and forth, a question and answer type thing. Plus, he's got the Secret A3 heads. He just sent me some pictures. I'll put them on here. You can see them. I'll kind of make a whole video just on that. He's going to make one on the machining of that combustion chamber and moving things around on that cylinder head. Those are going to be flowing probably in the low 400s, he was saying. So a lot of things happening. I appreciate you subscribing and sharing. Stay tuned.